Hello everyone, my name is Eric Jones and we're going to look at a PowerPoint presentation that I put together from a textbook that I use in the college I teach at and it is Professional Landscape Management by David L. Hensley and the PowerPoint, I titled it Snow Removal simply because that's what it's about and it has been approved by the North Carolina Licensing Board for Landscape Contractors and they give it a course number of CEL 400. Again, my name is Eric Jones. I have done way too much snow removal services in my career. Uh, I was employed by my parents, Elite Landscape Service and Nursery, growing up through high school, through college, for 10 years after college. I worked for them and we done a huge, huge amount of snow removal services. We were with an uh, organization uh, called Northwest Snow Management out of Indian Trails, North Carolina. Uh, whereas we were basically a subcontractor for these guys and we did a ton of snow removal for um, the Wachovias before they became Wells Fargo, BB&T Banks, uh, CVS Pharmacies, Burger Kings. So we had, a, we had a ton of snow removal and if we had a huge storm, it got to be very stressful uh, getting around all the properties. And prior to joining Northwest Snow Management, we actually... Uh, um, did a lot of our own marketing and got a lot of property management companies. We did a lot uh, during, uh, not during, but in Greensboro, North Carolina for some property management companies down there. Um, did a lot of banks in Greensboro and that was simply by basically picking up the phone one day during a storm and calling these property management services. I don't know if you remember, but several years back it was late 90s or early 2000s I can't remember um, but Winston-Salem we got about probably six to eight inches but from Greensboro to Raleigh you know they were getting in excess of a foot and we hadn't seen a storm like that here uh, in the Carolinas in quite a while but that was a very rare storm well we serviced our clients here in the Winston-Salem area I went back to the office got out the phone book and started uh, calling property management companies. They said, come on. So we loaded up and we went and we spent about four days uh, in Greensboro without any sleep pushing snow. And that really kind of got us set up to, uh, uh, to do the snow removal that, we, that we've done. So I have a lot of experience in it. I'm sure you guys have a lot of experience. Uh, I can't wait to teach this class face to face and to actually hear some of your guys' stories I do love doing that. I teach these classes uh, also face to face, and I love hearing the input from you guys. And, and like I've said in my previous lectures, guys, I'm not the expert at anything in the horticulture industry. It's kind of hard for any of us to be the expert. Our field is so broad that if you know everything about it, um, you're just an absolute genius. I learn something every day, especially being in the field of teaching. Uh, I learn from my students, I learn from my colleagues. I learn from ag uh, extension agents. I learn from suppliers. Uh, I learn from everybody. And that's, that's the best thing about this business is that I do. I learn something every single day. So, again, a lot of this is going to be a refresher for you guys. Um, hopefully not. Hopefully you can take something from it and actually uh, learn from it. And especially if you're new to it, it is a good business to be in. It's something that I personally don't want to do again. I'm looking forward to the next storm or the next snow event that we have. And I, I want to sit by the fireplace and, and, and sip hot chocolate. My girls are grown now. They're well, not grown, but they're 13, 11 and nine. And I missed a lot of time with them sledding down the hills, playing outside in the snow because we were always pushing snow. I don't regret pushing the snow because I made a lot of money doing it, but I do regret not being able to spend time with my girls uh, playing outside in it because when we would get home and the snow event was over, the snow was kind of melting a little bit. It was a wet snow. It was kind of muddy outside and, you know, I had to recover. We'd stay up, you know, three or four days straight, you know, cat naps in the truck. And by the time we got home, we wanted to crash for, you know, uh, several hours, if not, not an entire day. So, but again, let's go ahead and get started with snow removal. It is a great additional service to offer your existing clients. 
you're already in the landscape management business. You're already in the landscape contracting business. You've you've got a customer list. You could have you know numerous numerous accounts. So if you're deciding to offer snow removal as a service, why not advertise to your existing clients first? Something as simple as putting a little note in your monthly billing statement, sending it out letting them know that you're going to be offering snow removal services. If you're a full service landscape management company, you're probably already doing that. But even the customers that you're not pushing snow for, advertise for it. If you've purchased a new plow or you've gone out and got a new truck specifically for snow removal, market it to your existing clients first. It's cheaper to use your existing clients than it is to get a new one. So just offer it to them email list. I am big about email. I'm big about Twitter. I'm big about the social media like that. Advertising to your clients. Put it on your Facebook page. Put it on your Twitter page. Hey, we're going to be offering snow removal uh, services this year or we're accepting new clients for snow removal services. How many times do you drive by a doctor's office or a dentist office and on the sign outside their building it says now accepting new patients? Well, we can advertise the same way through through our uh, uh, social media. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. And it's also a great way to attract new clients. Well, say you have a storm somebody flags you down they want you to push their parking lot or whatever it's a good opportunity to uh, to get the landscape management services as as well um, and you know the best time to to market your snow removal is july august you know the hottest part of the year and so you ask me why why market in july and august and i'll tell you why here in a second but when you are marketing these services for snow removal, for landscape management services, you you can pick up new clients based on by just offering the snow removal. Um, time and time again, when we did our Christmas decor franchise, we would heavily market the Christmas decor side, but on the tail end, we were marketing our landscape services as well. Half the Christmas clients that we got ended up being landscape customers for us in the future by simple as having a double-sided business card christmas decor on one side the landscape services on the other side or anytime that we marketed the christmas decor it was christmas decor by elite landscape service and nursery and we would pick up landscape clients just from our christmas clients same way with the snow removal we would advertise for snow removal services Nine times out of ten, we would get that client as a landscape management uh, client as well. Snow removal can be very profitable. You can make a lot of money quick, but it is very unpredictable. You can also lose money too. You could be in an accident. You could uh, tear up some pavement. You could hit some curbs, chip some sidewalks. A lot of that can happen and cost you money, but but don't let that scare you because it can be very, very profitable. The worst thing about it, it is, is that it is unpredictable. You could go out and purchase two or three new snow plows and we not get a drop of snow this year. And that would be my luck. That would really be my luck. Or you could just go out, purchase one plow, or decide to fix up what you've got and we have the biggest snowstorms that we've seen in, in several several years, and you're not equipped for it. And then when you try to go and get a new plow, get some new equipment, and you know, places are sold out. I mean, you got to get in line to get those plows when it's when it's happening. Um, but very 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 profitable, very fun. You know, it's new. You know, you get that first storm of the season, you're ready to go, you're pumped up, but then by on the third or the fourth, you're like, whoa, I am tired. So, uh, again, mixed emotions uh, with snow removal for myself. And here's a quote from the textbook. Successful and profitable snow removal requires specialized equipment, a system to address the mechanics of snow removal, an effective pricing system, knowledge and dedication to your customers, and from your employees. So look at this. This is a big, big sentence, and, and, and let's talk about it. 
Well, you've got to have the specialized equipment. You've got to have the plows. You've got to have the, the tractors. You've got to have the skid steers. Well, good thing is we're in the landscape management and landscape contracting businesses. We have most of it. So we just got to upfit our, our vehicles with the plows, with the light bars. Um, we got to have an effective communication system back and forth with our employees and to our clients. Um, we had a system set up when we were working with Northwest Landscape Management that we kept up with uh, our times and our locations through an app on our phone that when we showed up at a property, and this was never really seen to the clients, but it was based going back to, to Northwest Management. And Northwest Management, guys, was a, um, a company at a, a near Charlotte in Indian Trails, North Carolina, that would subcontract out snow removal services um, to other landscape contractors. And it worked out good for us. Um, they, did, they handled the marketing, and they went after huge huge chains like banks, drugstores, uh, restaurants, things of that nature. So when we worked for them, we had several uh, Wachovia sites before it became Wells Fargo. We had several BB&T sites, uh, Burger Kings, CVS pharmacies, and we were able to, to concentrate them in our local area. We also went and did a lot of work in Greensboro for, for Northwest, and we did that because I don't know if you guys remember several years ago, probably late 90s, maybe 2000, Winston-Salem got like six to eight inches of snow in one storm event. But from east of Winston, starting like in Greensboro through Raleigh, I mean, they were getting in excess of a foot. And even in Greensboro, it was a foot of snow. Raleigh even got, you know, uh, way more than that. Well, we took care of our clients here. Uh, we worked for a large retirement community that we were finished pushing snow by lunch. We took care of our other things. We had enough equipment out there that we were pretty much done by lunch. So everybody came into the shop. I was in the office, and I started picking up the phone, going through the yellow pages, calling every real estate company and every property management service uh, in the phone book. Well, called them and said, hey, we know you guys have got a lot of snow down there. Do you need us to come push snow? They were like, please, I mean, begging us. So we loaded up and we spent about four days in Greensboro taking turns sleeping, sleeping when we could, uh, eating fast food, and we pushed and pushed a lot of snow. And what that did was open us up to uh, doing other types of jobs for these property management companies in Greensboro. So it really worked out well for us. And we made a lot of money pushing snow and we ended up doing a lot of landscape contracting work, new installations, and actually uh, doing uh, landscape management services for them. So we had already got established in Greensboro. So when we went with Northwest Snow Management, we started doing a lot of the, the Wachovia banks, BBNTs, uh, CVSs down in Greensboro. So we were running a lot of snow uh, removal services in Winston and a lot in Greensboro. So we were we were kind of spread out, but it was fun and we made money. But that, we had to have the specialized equipment to do it. We had to have the trucks with the plows to get there quick and move it. We had the skid steers and the front end loaders for the larger sites that we could park, drop off, you know, before the storm started. And everything was kind of set up. It was the specialized equipment. We had a system to address the mechanics of snow removal. Again, having the trucks that would quickly get from site to site. And when I say a system, we were working for banks. So what do you think the most, most important thing for them was during a storm event? Theirs was their ATM machine. They weren't too concerned at 10 o'clock at night if the parking lot was clean. They wanted to make sure that they had a path up to the ATM machine, whether it be the drive-through or the walk-up ATMs, they wanted to make sure that their customers could get to the ATM machine and withdraw money. So we had to have one truck that was going around to the banks just taking care of that. They would put down the ice melt, they would shovel the sidewalk to the ATM, they would push uh, the snow that was accumulated near the ATM. They had a clear path for their customers to get to the ATM, and we were putting down ice melt, uh, 
you know, sand or whatever that we had or whatever they called for just so that the customers could get to the ATM. And that was our system. Then we would go back later in the evenings and have the parking lots cleared before the banks would open up at 9 a.m. Sometimes they would delay opening to 10 or 11, gave us a couple more hours, but we had it organized in such a manner that we were able to, to do that. Effective pricing system. I'm not a big fan of per hour pushing. I know a lot of guys, when they first get that plow and they've just got one truck and one plow, they're like, yes, I get 85 or I get 100 bucks an hour to push snow. You know, my problem with that is somebody flags you down or you've got a client and it takes you 15 minutes to push the snow. They're standing there watching you and you're like, well, that's 100 bucks. Well, he was only here 15 minutes. I don't, I don't even want to discuss that. I... And what we had a system in place for was per inch push. So from one to two inches was a certain amount, and we covered everything. We would clean your parking lot tip top for X amount of dollars if it was one to two, if it was three to five inches, if it was six to eight inches, if it was eight to 12 inches, if it was 12 to 15, we had it priced, and our clients knew what it was going to charge, what we were going to charge based on that. So they knew during a storm event that if we had a three inch snow, it was going to cost them X amount of dollars. And by pricing it that way, I could send two trucks. I could send one truck. I could send a front end loader on a tractor. I could send whatever we had. We were doing it per inch, per event. Uh, and we didn't have to worry about that hourly charge. You have to have knowledge and dedication. You have to have knowledge of the products that you're using, the plows, the trucks, the ice melt, the brine, any of that chemical uh, ice melt that we're using. You have to know you have to know the rates. You have to be very smart with it. And you have to have dedication to your customers and your employees have to be dedicated to you and your customers. It's uh, you know, going back to the banks again. We were dedicated enough to them that we kept those uh, ATM machines cleared during the, the early hours of the event when people were still out. Now at 2 o'clock in the morning, not too many people are going to be uh, going to the ATM machine. But if it's snowing, uh, you know, 7, 8 o'clock at night, you want to keep that clean. We were dedicated to make sure that we did it. And our employees knew that that was the priority, that we could go back later in the evening uh, or during the, the early morning hours and take care of the parking lots. Dedication, dedication from, from, from your employees to the customers. So marketing and pricing strategies. It's coming. So are you ready? Book now and save. Well, I like marketing in July and August, primarily to our commercial and uh, uh, industrial clients that we're going to be pushing for. Why? Because they're working on budgets about that time of year. You know, they they may be they may start they may have their new physical year. They could be on the federal government's um, physical year. They may start one October. You don't you really don't know. You need to find out. But it's better to go ahead and start marketing in July and August and get these clients lined up as clients and be ready for them. Have a plan in place. These are our customers. When during a snow event, we're going to take care of this customer first, this customer next. Have it lined up. You don't want to start marketing snow removal when it's snowing because you have everybody and their brother out there doing the same thing. And it's basically going to be on a first come first basis. If it's snowing and you call a client and say, hey, you got snow removal services? Yeah, just, just hire somebody to do it, blah, blah, blah. So you've wasted time, you've wasted effort. Get them in July and August. If they book now and go ahead and sign with you, I can give them a 10% discount or some type of incentive to actually let them, uh, to let, for you to be their snow removal contractor. Well, you're probably also starting to start thinking about marketing your landscape management services again because people are doing their budgets for them. You don't want to try to find new landscape management customers in January. They've already got them for the year. You know, they're going to start in January or they're going to start in October. It depends on when their physical year is. We marketed Christmas decor in July and August. We had a thing called Christmas in July where people could get super discounts. And we went ahead and we started booking these early jobs. 
book with us now. Go ahead and sign up in July. We can start putting your Christmas lights up in October. You don't have to turn them on. They're clear lights. Nobody's ever going to know that you have clear mini lights in your tree until you turn them on. But we'll give you a 10% discount if we can do it in October. Yeah, yeah. We'll go ahead and do that. That's going to save me X amount of dollars. Let's do it. You offered that service in July and booked them early. Well, same thing with the snow removal. Start doing it in July, August. Have them set up. Be on a Have them on the plan to go ahead and start pushing them during the first snow event. Again, market it July, August. Focus on the market niche and your existing clients. Always, always advertise to your existing clients first and then pick out that market niche. Well, our market niche was property management companies, real estate companies. A lot of these real estate companies not only sell houses and represent buyers, they also do property management. They help uh, owners rent their properties out and actually help them find contractors uh, to fix up their properties. That was our biggest niche. Um, uh, easy because you get in good with one real estate company and they will have several properties for you to take care of. And then always use personal contact and direct mail advertising. I went through the yellow pages, wrote down what I did, and this was old school guys because you know now it's a little bit easier to find this stuff, but I did it the cheapest uh, way that I could to save money. But I would go through the yellow pages uh, and I would look up real estate companies or look up property management companies and I created an Excel sheet. So I had the company name, the address, the phone number, and if it didn't have a contact on there, I would call them and say, hey, who is the one that's in charge of your landscape uh, budget, your snow removal budget? I mean, is there, a, is there a direct contact that I can? Yes, it was Mr. or Mrs. such and such. Well, I would type that in the Excel sheet. So I, what I did was create my own personal database of real estate companies that was in the triad area. It was a pretty big file, and but I worked on it several days, got it where I could print out direct mail pieces. I would print out a little, little postcard. We now offer snow removal services and de-icing services. Call Elite Landscape Service today to... to uh, for your free estimate. Send that out. Send out maybe a tricolor or a four color brochure showing examples of properties that we'd push snow. Pictures of our equipment. Letting people know that we're a legit business. And then I'm gonna type up a personal letter that with the Excel sheet would insert Mr. So-and-so or Mrs. So-and-so. So it was a personalized letter to that individual. And I would personally sign my name. It wasn't no stamp or printout. It was, it was me signing the document, the, the letter, talking about offering the snow removal services that we have. And then I've mailed them like three times. Then I pick up the phone and say, hey, this is Eric Jones with Elite Landscape Service. Want to know if you got my information about the snow removal? Yes, we did. Thank you. Uh, and I've been meaning to call you back, Mr. Jones. Uh, but when would be a good time for you to come and look at our properties and talk about being our snow removal contractor? Did that. It worked. It worked. Just like passing out flyers works for getting residential clients um, for landscape management services. It works. Guys, I didn't believe it would. Uh, our Christmas decor franchise or kept talking about flyers, flyers, flyers. Yeah, there's going to be people that get super mad that you're putting flyers on their door or in their in their yard, but you're still going to get clients. It is the cheapest, most effective way to get it. Um, so that's how I that's how I got the snow removal services. It worked. We got a pretty big business on it, and um, it didn't cost me really anything except a stamp. Um, to uh, to get these to get this business, uh, we would print the flyers and the letters there in the office. We had a nice went and purchased our own nice printer that could print four color stuff, and uh, we were in business. Marketing and pricing strategies: understand the client's needs and priorities. Again, remember when I was talking about the bank? The banks had to have the ATM machines clean, and then by nine o'clock in the morning. They wanted to have the parking lot and the sidewalks cleaned and, and ready for business. 
explain the type of equipment that you will be using. Do this in your, your brochures. Do this on your postcard, in the letters. If you're direct marketing or direct mailing a Pacific client, if it's a property management firm that, that, that only owns um, shopping centers or grocery stores and looks after properties like that, those are huge parking lots. Tell them that you have the specialized equipment to take care of that. They don't want to see you out there on a little, a little lawn tractor with uh, a four foot wide bucket trying to clean, you know, a 10 acre parking lot. They want to see that you have the trucks or that you have the, uh, the larger tractors to, to handle that type of snow. Remember that this business is hard on employees and equipment. Again, you've got to pay your guys a little more money to do this type of work. Um, than you would, you know, working eight to five cutting grass. They're working through the nights. You're going to be paying them overtime. You're going to want to give them bonuses. You're going to want to give them days off. So all that needs to be kind of incorporated in your pricing system. Again, per hour charges, not my favorite, but it's probably the safest way to go if you're just getting into the business. Uh, my favorite is the per inch pricing. Uh, the next would probably be the per push charge, and those can really be intertwined. And then we have the per season price, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, but the per hour charge, you know, I always hear guys talking about, I get 85 bucks an hour to push snow, to push snow. Hey, I'm happy for you, um, but if you only work 10 hours during a snow event, you've made 850 bucks. I, with the per inch, can make that easily on a one to two inch push. But say we get a six to eight push, guys, it takes no longer, it doesn't take any, to push two inches of snow or to push six inches of snow, it's gonna take you the same amount of time. But I'm getting more money because I'm charging per inch to push the six inches of snow versus the two inches. I love the per inch. Guys, it's only charging 85 bucks an hour. He's still getting 85 bucks an hour. He's going to clean that parking lot the same amount of time. Going to, going to do it. And I tell you what, it's a lot easier to push. It's 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 easier to push 12 inches of snow than it is two inches. You you've got fresh powder that's you know thick. People don't want to drive when it's 12 inches either. They get just a little bit on the road, two inches. They still think they can drive. They're compacting it on the parking lots, pushing it down. It melts, turns to ice quicker. You know, that 12 inch, a lot easier to push. And I'm making more money. So we had a system, and Northwest kind of helped us do that. They're like, if it's one to two inches, you're going to you're gonna make this on the, uh, the Wachovia banks. And it was per site, per push. I mean, per inch, you know, because some of the banks are different and each each property had its own pricing system. So one to two inches and, it, you know, guys, it may only vary by 20 bucks or something like that. But based on the size of the parking lot, the the lengths of the sidewalks, how much ice melt they're going to use. So we had three pricing systems per inch on these banks. We had it per parking lot. We had, so we had per inch pushing uh, on the parking lot. We had per inch on the sidewalks for shoveling. And then we had per inch ice melt, um, which can, which combined the sidewalks and the, uh, the parking lot. So we actually had three separate charges per site based on the number of inches. Per push, you could just come out with a flat rate. Hey, for 250 bucks, I'm going to clean your parking lot and your sidewalks and apply ice melt. And then per season, what you could do is look at past history, kind of take an average of the storms that we have, and you might say, hey, for $2,500, uh, I will take care of your snow removal services. Doesn't matter if we have 10 storms or if we have one storms, I'm gonna charge you $2,500. Somebody's gonna get hurt during, during uh, during this type of uh, pricing. Either the real estate company or the landscaper is going to get hurt. I would never do per season pricing. Uh, but some real estate companies want that. And what you need to do is make sure that you're covering your cost uh, for that. You need to you need to you need to watch that pocketbook because again, 
we're in North Carolina. We could have a major, major snow season, and you've based it on two or three snow events, we could end up having 10, and you've lost, lost so much money. It could make you go broke. Retainers. Guarantees the client exclusive use of certain pieces of equipment on the property until the snow is cleared. And this is big for shopping centers and airports or, or places like the mall, things of that nature, where you bring in several, several front-end loaders, uh, huge pieces of equipment, and they can pay you a retainer to make sure that you're going to handle their property first. And then what you do is you just bill towards that retainer. It's kind of like having an attorney. Contracts. Well, usually the start time is around one inches. People don't want to do anything less than one inches. They they would get mad if you showed up to push snow and they don't have at least one inch. Um, so your contract needs to, to state when you're going to mobilize, when you're going to, to start pushing. You need to talk about ice melt. Um, some people don't want to use the, uh, the ice melt that could damage plant material. Um, some people may not want to use it at all. Some people may want to use the brine or whatever. This is where you need to get in front of the client and explain which services and which products that you have. Let them let them kind of have a menu choice of items uh, when it comes to ice melt. Removal of the ice melt or sand. Sand especially. You put that on the sidewalk, people start tracking it inside to the banks or to the restaurants or the stores. They're not going to like that. You may have to go back and clean that up, and that needs to be included in your pricing. Stop piles of snow. You need to know where it's okay to pile the snow. You don't want to push it uphill, and then it starts melting every night, and the temperatures drop, and then you've got a sheet of ice every morning for the next week or so. Where can you where can you stockpile the snow? They may not want you to stockpile it at all. They may want you to haul it off. We've had clients that we've had to do that for, and that's okay. That's just more money. And that's when you talk about snow hauling. Where are you going to haul it to? Where's the closest place to do it? Because they're going to have to pay you mileage. They're going to have to. Pay, I mean, you know, it's, it's going to be a flat fee to do it, but you need to know what it's going to cost you to do that. You need to know the property lines of the client. You sure don't want to start pushing for, for somebody else. Uh, and trust me, it'll happen. You've got some employees that aren't paying attention. Next thing you know, they've cleared half the parking lot for the store next door. Payment schedules. When are you going to get paid? Sometimes it could take two to three months, guys, to get paid on these snow removal services. And that's, that's bad, but it's just the way it is. Uh, we'd wait up to 90 days sometimes for paychecks on snow removal, especially from the larger real estate companies. Gravel lots and drives. Guys, you drop a plow on one of these, you're going to be pushing the gravel out. They may want you to, to re-gravel. Or you need to state it in your contract, not responsible for gravel lost uh, if we're pushing um, gravel roads. I'm not going to touch it. We're just, no, we're not going to do your gravel parking lots or your gravel drives or anything of that nature. You run across it once a blue moon. It's not going to be at your larger malls and shopping centers and that nature, but it, it, you could run across it. And I would just avoid it at all costs. Your mobilization charge. Well, if you're working specifically for one company, if you're working for one real estate company, you may, you may want to have a mobilization charge. Because what if news channels calling for this huge storm ladies and gentlemen prepare this is going to be the biggest storm we've seen in five years we're expecting 10 to 12 inches and you go ahead and you get everything ready you get your guys to come in they're sitting in the office drinking coffee waiting for that snow to come or waiting for that call to go ahead and pre-treat with ice melt and voila the storm blows over it was the biggest mistake that the weatherman has ever made well, look at all the money you spent mobilizing you've you've got to get paid for that and you've got to state that in your contract that hey we're going to charge x amount of dollars just to get ready the state does it for their subcontractors doing it on the road so why cannot we do it for for the people we work for and you also need to have a clause in there that hold your firm harmless for any and all liabilities I'm sure it'll still end up in court, but you need to have that in the contract because things are going to happen. But yeah, if you accidentally 
run into a car that's parked in a parking lot, you're probably going to have to pay for that. But we're talking about like damage to the parking lot, um, manhole covers, things of that nature. Uh, and you really need to, to mark those prior to the, the storm event. And that could be part of your mobilization charge. Insurance, you need to have commercial vehicle liability insurance, also general liability insurances, and you need to have something like premises and operations. Uh, you doing what you do when you are doing it. And then you need to have completed operation protects the company from any slips and falls after uh, leaving. And then here, you know, I just found this, uh, this guy here that specialized uh, in insurance just for snow contractors. And so really with the premises and operations, it's protecting you while you're pushing, while your guys are out there shoveling, it's, you know, protecting you on that. The completed operations is um, you've pushed the parking lot, you've put out the ice melt, some of the snow melts, it freezes again overnight, and you've got somebody walking into the store the next day, they're going to try to sue you because you still had ice on the sidewalk there. That's not your fault. I mean, that's just, you know, that is what it is. But this completed operations will protect you in a situation like that. All right. I recommend having a minimum of $1 million liability insurance with subcontractors. Uh, if you do use subcontractors, and again, we were a subcontractor for Northwest Management, Snow Management. It was, it was the probably one of the best relationships we had in, in business. It was just, it was good. They were good for us and we were good for them. It was a good working relationship, but we carried our own insurance policy and we would have to submit certificates of insurance to them before we get paid. Uh, covered under your policy, uh, you're going to have a premium increase. So if you're hiring a subcontractor that does not have their own insurance, you're going to have to cover them and that's going to make your premium increase. So let's say you've got a ton of snow removal work. You personally with your company cannot handle all the accounts. So you start hiring another landscape company or a fly by nighter who's got a plow and one lawnmower to do some snow removal for you. Well, they don't have workers comp. They don't have general liability and they damage the property or they run into a car or they, you know, it's going to happen. Think, dream it and it'll happen. So you're going to have to cover them. And when you come get audited by your insurance company, they're going to say, whoa, you paid such and such to, for snow removal services back in January. I need a certificate of his insurance. Well, he didn't have it. Well, you're going to have to pay it on them. Uh, make sure that when, when they do have their insurance, and I'm not going to hire anybody that doesn't have their own insurance. I'm sorry. We're in the business of making money. You, you're going to have to have the insurance to work for me. And when they do, make sure that they add you as an additional, uh, make sure they add your company as additional insured on their policy. It's going to cost them like 10 bucks. So, you know, we had to do that all the time. We were working for Creative Structures, uh, doing the O'Reilly Auto Parts installations. They had to be an additional insured uh, on our policy. It cost us, like I said, it was 10 or 15 bucks to do that. And then you need to have the workers' compensation for you and your subcontractors. Make sure they have that and their general liability. If not, you're going to be paying for it, and it's going to increase your premiums the following year as well. Now, equipment. And I keep, guys, I keep looking again at my watch to make sure I keep these lectures, you know, around an hour or a little under an hour. Um, but equipment. Here, you know, pickup truck with a uh, salt spreader on the back, got the plow on the front, good for pretty much um, any type of plowing environment, parking lots, roads, whatever. Uh, but the good thing about this is the mobility. Uh, you know, this truck can get around, it can get around quick. Um, you know, it's what you need moving site to site. Now, we used all three pieces of these equipment, especially on our larger properties. Skid steer, we could take and we could drop off. It could be set in there. So we could actually have a guy or one of our employees just drive to the site, jump in it, and start plowing. We got the Steiner tractor. We had one of the original Steiners. Here it's got snow broom on it, and it also has a blade that can go on it, and it's got the cab cover. But the one thing that I liked the most for these sidewalks was the dingo. We didn't have the tracks, but we had the little rub. We had the tires 
which was uh, easy to get around. And the tracks would be even better probably for it. But um, the best thing to clear to clear sidewalks. Um, we could get that up on the sidewalks and it could just go. And then we'd have a couple guys behind it just cleaning up a little bit. But we could move, move a lot of snow uh, off the of sidewalk, especially in shopping centers, um, large office complexes that had just, you know, could really end up having miles of sidewalks. We were able to do it fairly, fairly quick, a lot quicker than we could do it with the shovel. But these three pieces of equipment, again, with the mobilization charge, could be moved to the sites. Uh, there's places usually that you can um, lock these equipment up, um, you know, have it in a, in a safe place. So if you had the dingo and the skid steer and tractors, you know, all this could be uh, somehow or another locked together. So your guys only have to drive to that site. It's somewhere that you're going to be using it pretty much all day during the snow event. Uh, snow blower again, doesn't really work well for North Carolina. Um, you know, because our snow's wet, it melts and then it freezes. People compact in it. It's more or less used uh, where there's a lot more powder. Uh, but again, very good piece of equipment uh, with just a front end loader. I mean, you can pile a lot of snow up. You can push a lot of snow with a tractor like this. And like I said, it's hard on employees having the cab tractor where they can run some heat. Uh, they've got a radio. They've got a place to store the phone. Uh, they're able to hear the phone ring when you're trying to get in touch with them versus if it was uh, open cab. Um, perfect little thing right here again. A uh, little Kubota um, utility vehicle. It's got the, the salt spreader on the back. Got the snow plow in the front. Again, notice the light on top. All these need to be lit up at night so people can see it really good. Now, here's the individual that I feel real sorry for. He's got that cell phone in his pocket. You're trying to get hold of him. He's not hearing it ring. He's not feeling it vibrate. The poor guy's frozen. He's out here on a little bitty tractor. He's got the plow on the back. He's got the bucket on the front. And it's going to take him a good while to push any any property. Um, you know, but if this is what you got, this is what you use. Uh, you know, my dad did this for years. I remember as a little guy, dad taking a, uh, uh, a John Deere 1010 with the plow on the back and, and driving it from our shop into Winston and would stay out all day and he had the exact same brown coveralls as this gentleman has and uh, you know he worked hard doing that until we got into the trucks and the truck plows and things of that nature um, again piling up snow you know here they're using a rubber tire loader around here probably not as needed as much uh, but you know I have seen this at uh, you know the, the airport in Greensboro where they're actually uh, you know, doing the snow here and here we actually have a snow melter um, they actually take it and melt the snow actually now this is actually they're just hauling the next slide I have is, is a snow melter but they're actually uh, blowing the snow into the truck clearing it off the roads and they're hauling the snow off again us in this area we have more of a wet snow the the snow blowers just don't work quite as well uh, as actually just plowing it off and here is a snow melter uh, where they pile the snow up and they bring this thing in and they load it up and it melts the snow. Bad thing with this, you better make sure that uh, you're able to get the water off the parking lot um, because during the night it could refreeze. Uh, so you need to make sure uh, that the water does get off of the parking lot. But an efficient way to get rid of the snow but very costly. And you may have clients that want, uh, want you to do this. Again, subcontractors, they're personally accountable for their own equipment. They shouldn't send you any bills or invoices because they've damaged their equipment. They need to have the proper license and insurance. Train them as if they're an employee of your company. So when we start doing dry runs and, and uh, practice mobilizations, they need to be a part of it. Uh, hourly rate for their time and equipment. Again, I don't like that. I would set my own pricing and I would be like, hey, Mr. Jones, you're going to push, uh, I want you to see if you could push the CVS, the Wells Fargo, 
the two BBNTs and the three McDonald's for me. And I'm going to pay you this amount of money. Are you willing to do it? Well, yeah, I'll do it. So don't come back with that hourly price. No. Hey, it's per, per inch push. I'm going to pay you this to do this amount of work. And if we have any callbacks from the client, you need to go out and take care of it. It's your responsibility. And make sure that you can communicate during the snow event with them. The bad thing about this, they've promised you to get all this work. They get it done for you. Well, their phones are going to start ringing too. They're going to have buddies that need a lot pushed and things like that. So um, make sure you can get a hold of them. Make sure they're doing your your stuff first, especially because you're, you're they're going to make more money with you, but they're trying to satisfy everybody else and grow their business. And again, this was the Northwest companies that we worked for. They actually had Northwest Snow Management and Northwest Landscape Management, and we primarily just did the uh, the snow management with them. Scheduling. Again, preparation. You need to be prepared for the snow event. You don't need to be, when you start hearing these storms, you need to start checking the weather, the weather reports, days out. You don't need to wait till the day before a snow event to start getting ready for it. You need to have that mobilization charge so you can get it. You need to go and put snow stakes, flags, flag where the curbs are, flag where the sidewalks are, flag where the manhole covers are. I'm sure we've all had the snow plows and we've hit that manhole cover and I mean it's just about had us go through the windshield if we didn't have our seat belts on and do a dry run on a rainy day just go ahead and have your guys come in have your subcontractors come in they need to go out and put the snow stakes up they need to just do a dry run so they know their their sites so they know the routes to get to the site you don't want them out getting lost when there's six inches of snow on the ground Keep your equipment inside prior to the snow event. You don't want to have to scrape ice and stuff off a windshield. You want to be able to get into a warm truck that's clean. And then night, uh, night hours are better for the removal. And then visit the site multiple times during the storm. You might go and push at three to four inches. Well, there's still going to be more snow accumulating, so you might have to go back and push it again for two to three inches or whatever but that's still that's an additional charge you're doing it per inch per per time that you do it and then have relief crews or have people switch up and take naps in the truck while one guy's plowing because it is hard on your guys and here again this was a bank that we took care of in Greensboro um, and this was a major major storm that we'd had uh, but what we had to do was to keep the the drive-through lanes clean. So we would go through there uh, two or three times, make sure that the drive-through is clean, and then we would plow during the night. And I actually took this um, um, right after it just stopped snowing, so we had just gotten to the site. But this was the first thing that we had to do uh, was for this. But this this accumulated pretty quickly overnight for us. De-icing, pre-treatment, or anti-icing materials, you can use a liquid or solid. I prefer the solid, um, even with uh, uh, post-treatment and pre-treatment. Uh, didn't necessarily have to have this big spreader. You know, my dad had one in his personal truck that he would go around doing larger parking lots. But my favorite thing to do was to take a fertilizer spreader. I could load, you know, set a pallet of ice melt on the back of my truck. And I had a little hitch receiver to put the fertilizer spreader. And I could go and hit several, several, several spots. Uh, and I would do the smaller ones. And then I could take that fertilizer spreader and get up on the sidewalks, get through the drive throughs near the ATM machines. And then while my dad was going out uh, doing the larger parking lots with, with, uh, uh, his truck spreader but we would do pre-treat Northwest had a system where they would call us and say you've been authorized to pre-treat and what they were doing was getting authorization from the banks the the restaurants and, and even the drug stores most of the time the restaurants and, and the drug stores wouldn't do the pre-treat uh, but the banks were all about the pre-treat they wanted to the pre-treat especially uh, for the drive-throughs and for the ATMs, but we would go and we would get to do the whole, you know, the whole property. And guys, putting out a pre-treat 
and depending on what type of snow or if it's more of an icy snow, having that ice melt underneath it works so much better for plowing. Um, calcium and magnesium chloride are the safest for the plant materials and then or you can use a brine installation which is a liquid application. You can always tell when the state puts out the brine you can see the white stripes in the road and you know if they've pre-treated you probably need to pre-treat your stuff because it's uh, it's going to happen. Uh, but again, calcium and magnesium chloride, the best for plant materials. And especially your higher end commercial property that's got extensive landscapes, you would want to use this. Abrasives, they do not melt ice. They only help with traction. And here you see a truck putting out sand. And this is good for parking lots or especially entryways uh, coming, in, uh, coming in and out of a property. Here we see some salt damage to plants. Um, and again, you know, uh, I would have this in my contract, not really responsible for it, but uh, it could get nasty and it could be some lawsuits involved with this. Avoid using salt de-icing materials. Only use when needed and apply at the label rates when you do, and then do not pile the snow near plants. Municipal snow removal. Well, not what I want to do. Uh, it's good money in it. My neighbor uh, who owns a trucking company has became really, really wealthy because of his uh, contacts with the state of North Carolina. But you're going to have to have the larger trucks and the larger plows to actually do the municipal snow removal. Or you're going to have to be uh, in the grading business and actually have motor graders. You see this on the larger highways. Uh, and, and the larger road systems, it's kind of hard to do this in the back country roads or even in uh, uh, parking lots. And SEMA, again, is a, uh, well, the Snow and Ice Management Association is a good organization to be a part of uh, to get the certified snow professional designation and to actually just learn from it. Uh, but good, good folks here. And that concludes snow removal. My name again is Eric Jones. If you have any questions, there's my phone number, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture. Thanks.